The pleasure trap is the main, in my opinion, impediment to conscious living, to conscious being. Because what this is, is a reality in which you are ruled by your insatiable desire for more. More pleasure, more fulfillment of your needs, and just more of anything that you believe you need in the moment to prove that you do not have enough and do not feel enough just as you are. The pleasure trap dictates your entire life because if you give in to this need for pleasure, there's always going to be a feeling that you need to have something that your brain is telling you is what you need. There's always going to be a feeling like if you have that pleasure, which still exists outside of the realm of your inner world, you're going to be happier, more successful, more abundant, and more fulfilled in some way. Because if there is this existent need for more pleasure, you don't feel pleasure for just being you. You don't experience fulfillment with just what is. You always have this urge to experience pleasure on the other side of your consciousness, which means you're never going to experience the true depth of meaning in your life. I think not enough people are talking about pleasure because this is not something that humans can easily evade. Arguably, pleasure is something that all of us are confined by. The need for pleasure is something that rules our physical system, our emotional and mental bodies of consciousness, because we're always looking for a way to relieve pain, to escape suffering, to avoid the damage that we might have experienced in our past, so as to experience more pleasure rather than pain in the future. However, when we are ruled by the need for pleasure, we can become trapped in our own box of gratification that we believe needs to be surrounding ourselves so that we don't mimic the same feelings we experienced at some point in which we did not experience that pleasure. For example, if you experience any kind of trauma, it's very likely that the kind of pleasure you're seeking now is exactly the reciprocal ingredients to make you avoid that same kind of pain that you once experienced. If you once had an uncomfortable feeling, you may try to avoid that completely by developing a new kind of a coping mechanism. And this is where addictions form, different kinds of negative habits, and all kinds of evasive ways of being so that you no longer have to feel the difficult feelings that once ran through your body and your emotional being. The pleasure trap is a creatively designed system orchestrated by your ego, your conscious brain and your identity that goes through this algorithmic way of adapting to life in order to keep you from experiencing that same stuff that kept you in a state of pain in your past. So when you start feeling everything that has been negative to you, your body develops a way of internalizing those feelings and developing this emotional wall that allows you to avoid that same pain. And inherently what that makes you experience is a need for pleasure. Pleasure is quite simply the act of gratifying your need to feel good. This can come in so many shapes and forms. Eating something to distract you from a difficult day. Having alcohol at the end of the day to make you feel less stressed. Pulling for a cigarette to relieve some of that pressure you're feeling inside. Going out on a date with somebody who might not even be the best person for you, but you just feel that is going to serve as a distraction. Going out and doing things and buying clothes or going on compulsive shopping trips in order to make you feel like you are whole, so that you don't have to focus on the different things and situations where you don't feel like you are. All these are examples of how you might try to pleasure yourself in ways to make you feel more detached from the reality you're currently experiencing from all the emotions that you're nesting deep inside of yourself that you do not want to be confronting. And when you hone into this lack of pleasure that you're experiencing deep down, you're going to feel like those feelings are so difficult to fully embody that you want to find the filter of pleasure on top of them. You want to find ways to distract yourself so that you don't have to confront the reason for your emptiness to understand why it is that you're actually not feeling fulfilled and whole within yourself, so you instead choose to gratify yourself with meaningless, simple, superficial pursuits for pleasure. This leads into the important inquiry on whether you're actually living your life in a way that is aligned with joy or superficial happiness, because there's a big difference. The pursuit of happiness is a never-ending quest for that feeling of gratification which you can get when you explore all the possibilities and just align from moment to moment with the things that you want to use to pleasure yourself. Joy, on the other hand, is not a fleeting state. 
It is a state of full embodiment of your essence, of your true self, and of all the feelings and experiences that are running through your emotional body and your entire consciousness so that you can fully get acclimated to your state of being. The only way that you can experience pleasure in a way that is not fleeting is if you commit to following your joy, which means you commit to embodying the feeling of truth. This frequency of authenticity that you know is tied to the fullest expression of yourself. It is through the full embodiment of everything that you are experiencing, think, know, feel, and feel as in integrity with your own soul that you can experience a kind of pleasure which is not attached to anything that you could or might not have in any moment of time. This kind of pleasure can't even be described as a somatic experience. It is more of a soulful state of just being present and being at peace because you know that everything is okay when you choose you and you choose harmony. When you choose the condition that you want your consciousness to operate in, you're choosing to find yourself in a state of joy before the reasons for joy even arises. You're choosing to create the soulful condition of peace, love, harmony, joy, and every other wonderful high frequency condition that you want to have pulsating through your inner space that you want to also have emanating in your world. And guess what? When you can do that, you're going to feel like the world around you becomes more harmonious, more joyous, more loving, more abundant, and more peaceful because that is naturally the reciprocal state of your consciousness. What you begin to experience within emanates into the entirety of your outer experience, and therein lies true inner peace. But why is it so challenging to access this state of being, to touch our souls and to give us permission to experience true inner bliss by accepting rather than repelling the inner conditions we're experiencing? Well, that's because the brain makes it a lot easier to contact the need for pleasure rather than the need to go within and to integrate the experience of the ego and the soul. It is much easier to pull for a coping mechanism, something to distract yourself away from true inner knowing, than to really accept everything that you're going through and to merge the discontinuities into a coherent framework of your own consciousness. When you experience a discontinuity in the mind-body-spirit matrix, the immediate feeling your body is going to have and your brain is going to dictate is to look for pleasure. Because what you experience in that moment of discontinuity, for example, when your body is saying one thing and your mind is saying another, or when you're feeling something deep down with your gut or in your heart, and instead you're choosing to do something or behave in a completely different way, what you're going to be feeling in that moment when there's a schism between these different mental and soul operating vehicles is that you want to pull for pleasure. You want to do something to alleviate the pain of not being in coherence within yourself, and so you choose to actually distract yourself completely from the purpose that you should be embodying. And so what happens when this pleasure trap is evoked by your mind is you actually lead yourself away from what you're supposed to be doing. Instead of choosing coherence and harmonization of these aspects of yourself, you choose to pull yourself farther away into this world in which gratification exists at a superficial level. You're actually fragmenting your consciousness so as to not confront the true issue, which is that you're not taking power into your own hands and you're not choosing to become conscious of where you are unconscious. And that is where the need for true awareness lies. So what can happen along the awakening path is that people find spirituality and they decide for themselves that this is the path for them to be happy. Like I mentioned in last week's video on the main problem with the law of attraction, there can be a very easy escape route that people find in spirituality to just assume that they have figured it all out. And now they can live their lives in a completely free manner to just align with what they want to do in the moment. You might begin to use spirituality as a tool to fuel your ego's desire to experience more pleasure. You might use this substance of spirituality to make you feel like whatever brings you pleasure in the moment is what you need to touch that epitome of spiritual awareness. But this couldn't be farther from the truth. Because unless you choose to listen to the voice of your ego and compare it to the voice of your higher self, your inner self, or your soul, you are not going to really understand what is the difference between superficial pleasure, which your brain is dictating, and what your soul experiences as true fulfillment as the true soul needs that are tied deeply to your purpose. Unless you can begin to consider, as almost a loving parent to yourself, what is actually the best thing that you want to be experiencing? What is the best choice for yourself? And if you were to really go out of body right now in your experience, would you really be doing what you're doing? Would you be saying what you're saying? Would you really be choosing to keep up that facade, to chase those superficial pleasures, to do the things that don't feel in alignment with your true self, or 
would you choose to come back within and to accept that these discontinuities are leading you away from your true purpose? When you can feel that there is another way in which you can be living your life, a way that is aligned with what your soul really wants for you, with what is the healthiest, happiest, and most harmonious decision to be making for yourself, you can start to live in a way that is really in alignment with what is best for you. This best version of yourself is attached to all the possibilities that you might not be seeing right now because they don't fall into the pleasure trap. They're not the first things that your brain is going to be telling you you're supposed to be doing. Because in order to choose those best possibilities, you have to actually stick with yourself along the journey. You can't choose to listen to your old version of self. You can't choose to listen to the judgments, perceptions, and opinions of the people in your past that led you away from the true you. You can't be succumbing to fear, to egocentric demands. You can't be choosing to do the things that you believe other people want you to do. And you can't choose to remain in this lie or the self-imprisoned box of your mind that you think will make you happy. Because if you haven't realized by now, the things that your brain tells you is not always true. The things that your brain dictates is the only route to happiness is not really the way to be. The voice in your mind is very often misleading because it is simply a projection of what your experiences in the past have made you believe is the best way to look at life and to act in order to achieve what you need to avoid pain in the present moment. But again, pleasure is something that makes you evade that pain, not necessarily choose the true route to joy. So if you begin to think in a way that is outside of the box of your mind, you begin to see possibilities that are much more real and important to you. You begin to think about why are you living your life in the way that you're living it? And what if you choose to silence the voice of your mind and explore the possibilities of the inner self? What if you choose to consider that the life that you're living right now might not be a reflection of the full you? What truths are you choosing to not assimilate into your consciousness? Where are you choosing to not represent your true self in this persona that you show the world? The interesting thing that happens when you choose to fully embody your true self is that the need for superficial pleasures completely dies if you do that. You no longer will feel a need to distract yourself with negative habits, choosing things that you know are not in alignment with the best version of yourself because at that point in time when you commit and devote yourself to the divine and to serving the universe through your own alignment with your true self, you are choosing to embody that truth. And within that state of coherence, there is no space for more distortion, for more delusion and disillusionment that you put yourself through by choosing to not be devoted to this kind of truth. Life becomes most pleasurable when you effortlessly choose to be yourself and you choose to do the things that feel totally in alignment with what you're supposed to be doing. All of a sudden, the right thoughts come to you. You're going to start evolving in your character, choosing the right people to hang out with, choosing the best things to do, optimizing your diet, your lifestyle, your routine, feeling better and being more motivated to live your best life. Because if you choose to really live holistically and in a wholesome way, there's going to be no more need to escape into the pleasure trap to live out this semi version of yourself that isn't really experiencing the point of existence. So next time you try to distract yourself with something that you know isn't aligned with the best version of you, remember these words and ask yourself, where am I not being truthful to myself? Where am I not embodying what I really feel, what I really want and what I really deserve in my life? Where am I choosing to limit myself and my potential because I'm still mirroring behaviors in my past due to trauma, due to pain, and due to distortion caused by other people who did not realize what is the best that I have in store in my life? And when you can become conscious of that shadow aspect of you that is sabotaging on your true joy, you can begin to ascertain why it is that the pleasure you're choosing right now is not the pleasure that you want in the long run. And start beginning to choose the pleasure that is nested in purpose, in your true ability to be and to express your truth, because in the long run, that is the only pleasure that will really bring you satisfaction for being here.